Hello friends, this video on data handling part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's look at the third question. We played in all the four games. How would you find the mean? So let us try to find out the mean of B. So mean of B would be sum of his scores which is 0 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4. And how many games did he play? He played four games. So here in this case, you can see the difference. In case of B, he played game 1 but scored 0. So we counted this as a number of game. But in case of C, he did not play game 3. So that was not counted. So now when you find this sum, it comes out to be 18 divided by 4, which is equal to 4.5. So the average score of B is 4.5. So now the last question is who is the best performer? Now when you look at the average score, so if you compare, you would see that the average score of A is greater than C, which in turn is greater than B. Even if you look at the total score, what do you see? So if even if you try to compare the total score, how will you find the total score just by finding the sum of the scores in all the four games. So in that also you would see that A is greater than C which in turn is greater than B. So definitely A is the best performer. The rainfall in a city on seven days of a certain week was recorded as follows. Find the range of the rainfall in the above data. Now, even before we find anything from this data, let us first try to arrange this data in tabular form. Now, whenever we arrange this data in tabular form, what do we do? We first of all create two columns, one for day and the other for rainfall. And the most important criteria to arrange or to organize the data is that we arrange it in a specific order. So, we will arrange it in ascending order. So, let us start from the smallest values. So, which are the smallest values here? So, 0, 0. So, first let us write the 0, 0 and then what do we have? We have 1, then we have 2.1, then we have 5.5, then we have 12.2 and we have 20.5, right? So, this 0, 0, these are for Monday and Thursday, 1 is for Sunday, 2.1 is for Wednesday, 5.5 is for Saturday, 12.2 for Tuesday and 20.5 for Friday. So this is how I have organized the data in ascending order. Now we have to find the range of rainfall. Now how do we find range? We know that range is nothing but the difference between the highest value or the maximum value and the minimum value. Now looking at this organized data, can you tell which day receives the highest rainfall? Of course, it is the Friday and how much is the highest rainfall? It is 20.5. What about the lowest rainfall? So lowest rainfall is received by both Monday and Thursday and the value is 0, 0.0. So therefore, the range of rainfall is 20.5 millimeters. So this would be the range of rainfall in the above data. Now find the mean rainfall for the week. Now when you have to find the mean rainfall, what do we do? So in order to find the mean, we Find out the sum of the data divided by the number of days for which the data is given. So let us find the sum. So sum would be 0 plus 12.2 plus 2.1 plus 0 plus 20.5 plus 5.5 plus 1 divided by for how many days the data is given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this divided by 7. So the sum comes out to be 41.3 divided by 7 which is equal to 5.9 mm. So this would be the average rainfall for the week. Third question, on how many days was the rainfall less than the mean rainfall? So you have to find out those days when the mean rain when the rainfall was less than the mean rainfall. So basically you need to find out all those days where the rainfall was less than 5.9. 
So Monday is less than 5.9, Tuesday is not, Wednesday is again less than 5.9, Thursday is again less than 5.9, Friday is not, Saturday is 5.5 which is less than 5.9, Sunday again is less than 5.9. So therefore on 5 days of the week rainfall was less than 5.9 millimeters and what were those days Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. Question number 5. The heights of 10 girls were measured in centimeters and the results are as follows. So these are the heights of 10 girls. So there are a couple of questions being asked in this regard. So even before we answer these questions again, what we will do, the first thing that we do is we arrange the data in ascending order in a tabular form. So we create a table with just one column that is height and then we put this data arranged in ascending order from smaller to bigger. So 128, 132, 135, 139, 141, 143, 146, 149, 150 and 151. So this is how we have arranged the height in increasing order. So the first question is what is the height of the tallest girl? So tallest girl that is the height at the end because this is the biggest number. So 151 centimeter would be the height of the tallest girl. What about the height of the shortest girl? So definitely the shortest girl would be 128 centimeters. What is the range of the data? So range is equal to tallest minus shortest that is 151 minus 128 which is equal to 23. So 23 centimeters is the range. What is the mean height of girls? How do you calculate mean height? So mean height is going to be the sum of the heights that is 128 plus 132 plus 135 plus 139 plus so on till 151. So you add all these values and divide by how many? Divide by 10 because these are the height of 10 girls. So you have 10 such values. So this comes out to be 1414 divided by 10 which is equal to 141.4 centimeters. So this is the mean height of the girls. How many girls have heights more than the mean height? So how many heights are greater than 141.4? So all the heights starting from 143. So all these heights that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are 5 girls who have a height greater than the mean height. So these are the girls 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So their heights are greater than 141.4 centimeters. So you see, so did, do you see the advantage of arranging the data in increasing order? It becomes easier for you to calculate the range. It becomes easier for you to decide uh, which all data are greater than a particular value, which all of them are greater than the mean height, which all are less than the mean height. So that means arranging the data in tabular form helps. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.